Because I think most of us do that. We all start off as artists for ourselves. It's something we enjoy, it's fun, it gives us a stress relief or just whatever form. But after a while, it gets to a point where it's like, man, I feel like this is a gift that I have that needs to be shared with others. And as we open it up to others, I think it's always important to figure out like how can we connect what my experience or my process to someone else. Cameron Mitchell, welcome back to the show. It has been, hey. yeah, like, let's see, a while. I think season one was the last time you were on. Yes. Oh. Um, wasn't this, yeah, this, this was almost a year ago. Yeah, it has been. Wow. I know this whole year has flown by and I'm just like, I don't <laughs> even know what to do with that. It's time to decorate for Christmas and I'm not ready for all that. So I know. <laughs> I was definitely thinking we might have to pull out some of the Christmas decorations ourselves. It's definitely just got cold here. So I'm I'm like, yeah, it's it's really winter, wintery fall season now. Yeah. So. It's freezing and but hey, it's coffee and words. So I've got my my warm beverage here and feeling yes. great. I and have as well. <laughs> yeah. Oh, let me see what yours says. Oh, I love that. So this is technically my wife. All right. I really like it. It says, I'm kind of a big deal. I'm essential. I like so. it. <laughs> well, um, you know, for people who don't know you, and I would encourage them to go back and watch your previous episodes, because we've we've had some really good discussions on here. Uh, you are an actor, a writer, a spoken word artist, um, poet laureate of Murfreesboro, and yes. um, you you do a lot in the community and you know you're a youth mentor which is something that is so close to my heart so um really excited to have you back and i was i was thinking about um our art and like you and i most of what we do relies so heavily on words and and yeah. i was thinking about words and the power that they have and you know when we think about art a lot of times we think of like the visual arts and we think of paintings and sculptures and just things that we can can see and so yeah. i hadn't really thought about you know how powerful words are when we put them out there that they paint a picture in the mind, you know, and kind of they, they leave an impression on us. So we're not viewing them with our eyes, but yet words are very visual. They create something, you know? And so yeah. I got to thinking about that. And, um, you know, do we take that for granted? What do you think? Do, do any of us um, take for granted the weight and the power of the visual aspect of our words? Yes, I've been thinking about that a lot lately, that we do. I think a lot of people take advantage of just how powerful words can be. I mean, whether that can really build up the community or destroy. And we see this a lot with mainstream media. You know, some people may say like, oh, it's just words, it's just music, it's not really doing anything, but words are what what are written into journals and newspapers, we read them. And then the counselors and the senates and all of those people in politics create laws based off of what they're seeing with those words and those words now become law. And so we know that words do have a lot of power. We're seeing it with the youth being influenced every day by artists. Um, and these things they regurgitate they take them in and they want to live out what they're hearing. And so it's really important, everything that we say about ourselves and others, I really take that into deep consideration. Uh, one phrase that I like to go off when I speak is life and death is in the power of the tongue. So I choose to speak life with it. And so anytime I'm speaking, I try to make sure that I'm doing something to edify and or educate, you know, in that way, because you never know what those words can do to somebody no matter how small it may seem to you it can have a big effect and I've had moments where I've encountered people like that and it's just like you know I didn't realize how big that was so that's something I think about 
Yeah. And it, you know, it can be a split second. You know, we have like every time we, we speak or we write something down, we're making a choice, uh, not only of the words that we use, but the way we convey those words, you know, in our, in our inflection. And, um, you know, I, I saw this quote the other day, um, about words being either bullets or seeds. And that just stuck with me because I thought, man, that is so true. How we yeah. can just, we can cut someone deeply or we can yeah. plant something that's going to grow and create yeah. something better and give life, you know? And so, yeah. it's like, man. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you, what you do um, is, is really, I think, you're, you're, um, when you get out there and perform, cause I've been fortunate enough to, to see you perform and it really is an experience. Um, it is very edifying. Like, I feel like that's what you're doing. You're planting seeds. Yeah. Um, what is our responsibility as artists, you know, when, uh, when we're using our words and choosing how we use them? Yes, man, that is a great question. Um, and that's something that has really motivated me as an artist to be more purposeful with what I do. But as an artist, I realized that we are the front line. We're the ones on the battlefield of this world to show what is really gonna happen next. We paint the pictures for the community with our words or with the visuals. And those pictures that we put in people's minds bring new understanding, bring new empathy, new sympathies. Uh, really even unlock new joy that people didn't know that they could have. And so it's really cool to even uh, educate in the historical facts using art. You know, a lot of people don't think they like history until they hear it in an artistic way. And they're like, oh man, this is really cool. I never knew about this subject before or this particular situation. And that changes mindsets that creates conversations that a lot of people don't tend to have. And I love when we bring art to someone and they converse about it and they take that home to their families or their friends and they tell us that they've done this and it really changes their perspective about a particular subject or a thing that they were struggling with. So I think it's really cool. And again, you know, just going off of um, what I was told was that the artist is the first one to paint the picture the journalist is the one who writes the paper based off of that picture. And then the politician creates the law based off of that newspaper. And so just knowing that we have such a powerful position to be in, you know, art is not something small at all. It's much more bigger. It's powerful. So. It is. And, and how difficult is it to to get the attention um, with art now, do you think with our young people, since you mentor young people, because there's so, we need to continue to cultivate and and really spend time with with our youth of this next generation that's coming up and and, and make sure that they, they have all of these things um, at their disposal so they can grow and, and flourish and, and become um, that next generation that's going to continue things in a positive way. So like as artists now, what are things that we can do to kind of help inspire them um, and just sort of help them with their words and make sure that they are seeing and hearing um, and reading, um, I guess, the, the not the right things. I don't, I'm trying to figure out how yeah. to word this, you know, because I think it's, um, they're yeah. exposed to so many things all the time. But, yes. I mean, I, I think it's important to really just like be there with them through it. Cause sometimes the kids will hear us talk, but when we're able to walk with them through the process and even help them to see the full process is super important. So one thing that's really been on my mind as you, as we talk about the power of words, is um, a rapper that passed away a couple of weeks ago. His name is Takeoff from this group called Migos. And, you know, definitely a tragic situation that it was a murder over a dice game. And this is a rapper who at any point in time, if he wanted to, he could take a, buy a ticket today and go to Hawaii or, you know, in the mountains, wherever he feels like going. But 
like him, many rappers find themselves going back to neighborhoods that are not good for them and trying to impress people that may not be good for them, that they may not know well, and doing things that they rap about or participate in that are not good for themselves or the community. And then he died over that game, Mm -hmm. over a game that he, in my opinion, he should not have been playing. He should have been away from things like that. But I guess they're a part of them that feels like they have to fulfill that, what they're rapping about, or, you know, they, they're still attached to that old lifestyle. And what happens is, you know, a lot of people were very just upset about it, about what happened, but we're seeing it happening all the time with the youth because the youth hear those lyrics, they regurgitate it to each other, and they want to live up to it. Their friends will push them into those spaces to live up to those lyrics and we see it with nashville having such a high youth crime rate and it's very difficult for a lot of the youth to really operate in a way where they can be positive because all of their influences they're pulling in all these negative influences of lyrics and words and so i think it's so important for them to see that yeah art can be very broad it can be very eclectic you can definitely do different things but do keep in mind that some things have effects effects whether they are good or they really help the community and really help people grow or they hurt and i had a there's a rapper that mentioned how too many rappers are dying too much Mm -hmm. there's so many that are either passing away or being incarcerated because of whatever lifestyle they're choosing to live and so, you know, I, I am a huge fan of hip hop and rap. I enjoy it so much. There are a lot of rappers that are out here that are doing great work. And even some who've done stuff and are transitioning into better words and better just um, artistic approach. But really trying to make this push, not just rap, but in all forms that provoke words to really be positive and think about the repercussions. And I'll say this last example, I was helping some youth over the summertime who just wanted to rap about anything. And they were rapping about some of the similar stuff. They see it on TV, they hear it in the music, say they want to share the same things. Things that they are not doing, that they're not a part of, they have no idea what this stuff means. (laughs) But they just want to rap about it, it just seems fun. And I asked the kid, I was like, okay, would you be okay if somebody committed a murder or they committed suicide or something of that magnitude. And the last song that they were told that they were listening to is your song. Wow. And that really hit him. He really thought about that for a second. He's like, yeah, but I mean, it's not my fault, but I was like, that's fine. But are you going to be okay if the last song he was listening to is your song? And he really thought about that. It was like, nah, that wouldn't be cool. Then I can tell in that moment, that was the first time he had actually thought about something like that. And I think helping them to see that full process really makes a big difference. And even on the flip side, helping them to see that your, imagine the song that you play is what gets the next president elected or, you know, gets the next person to uh, motivate them to create the cure for cancer. You know, something just really amazing. So. I think that's that's really important. It is. And you just made me think of something too, because we, we're talking about the words that we put out there and how others receive them. You made me think about the impact that our own words have on ourselves and in our own lives. Do they, how do they in, influence us? So, you know, if I'm, if I'm writing something, those words, you know, I came from me, I put them out there. What kind of impact does that have on me? You were talking about the rappers that return to the things that they're rapping about. Yeah. Almost like manifesting that in your own life that you're trying keeping something going. Or if so if I put something negative out there, I'm I'm building a negative headspace around myself. Yeah. Oh yeah. Not just to other people. So that, I think that's important. And it just kind of maybe it kind of just goes in a cycle almost, I would think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because, you know, I've known saying that says out of the mouth, the heart speaks. And so it's just like, you know, you can kind of tell 
where a person's headspace is by what they give off and you know how we speak about ourselves makes a difference we and i think you know scientifically it's proven just there there have been scientific experiments where they've shown people speaking death to plants and then another group speaks life to plants and they noticed the ones who spoke death to the plants or spoke negativity over them the plants began to die or wither pretty quickly but the ones that spoke positive or encouraging words the plant the plants were more stronger they were healthier and so it's just showing like if that could happen with a plant it's so much more with us as humans you know we, we see that with depression anxiety you know just self-esteem um you know as i talk to the youth in the schools and a lot of times we don't I guess as adults, we don't think kids really have feelings, even though we were all kids ourselves with all kinds of emotions and feelings. And they talk and they are full of so much, even in elementary school. They're trying to figure out the world. They're trying to understand things. And just the few words that get spoken over them, just the few compliments that they may receive in one day, they may not have had one all week. And it just lights up their day. So... I think it's so important. Yeah, kids absorb so much. We don't even realize sometimes how much they're absorbing. Yeah. And how yeah. important it is to um, remind them constantly, you know, um, how much you love them and how, you know, how talented they are and, and how much light they have to give. You know, sometimes we, we get so busy. I think maybe we forget to remind and remind anyone of those things. It's funny that you <laughs> plants because um I I was watering we have um a Christmas cactus in the um in the kitchen and I was watering it and I was talking to it the other day and my husband looked at me and he was like what is wrong with you I'm like you know, you're supposed to be positive if you talk nice to the plants it makes them healthy and he was just laughing at me he thought it was funny yeah um, but have you heard of the rice experiment um I, I'm not sure. Tell me about it. Okay, you should look that up. Um, it's. I thought it was kind of, well, I thought it was interesting when I first heard about <laughs> it. I know um, a teacher did it in a school system somewhere. You can find all oh. kinds of people have done this and you can find all kinds yeah. of people on the internet. Um, so we tried it a few years ago and it was really, really interesting. And you have to do it controlled. You know, you cook this rice and you know, uh -huh. make sure the jars are clean and you put it in, I think it's like four different jars. And there's one that's the control jar. So you don't do anything with it. And yeah. um, there's the, you do a hate one, um, a, a love one and an ignore one. So uh, each, every day you go, go by these jars and you just speak hateful, angry, just horrible things to the hate or angry jar. And then you just, yeah. you know, all kinds of loving things, wonderful, positive energy things to the jar that has the love rice in it. And then the ignore one, you completely ignore it. You know, just mm -hmm. like that person in the room that you're not going to talk to kind of thing. And you do it for a certain amount of time. And there was significant changes in like the, the love rice uh, looked almost the same. I think you do it for about a month. I don't remember the time frame, but um, mm -hmm. it was almost the same as when we had put it in, in the jar wow. and the, the hate one, the angry one had this horrible color. There was like, there was fuzz growing in there. It was like oh. dark and gray in areas uh, really bad. Is and the ignore, I, I had took pictures. I don't remember what that one, but it looked like, but it had, a, it was different too. And it had a change and it was, yeah. so anyway, all of that to say, yes. we're talking yeah. about words and, and, and vibes and energy and like what we, you know, put out there in the world and what that can do to both ourselves and to other people. There really is yeah. something to it. And there is a lot of psychology that has been studied on the, on this. So, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, man, that's, that's so cool. I'm sitting here thinking like, man, <laughs> I feel like I want to try this experiment. Coffee and uh, words just went scientific today, but. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Using our science. Like we know that words are powerful. I don't think anybody would question that, but I mean, when you yeah. really break it down and look at that and I know it's, we, cause we do get really busy and we're focused on social media or other things that are going on. And so sometimes like we don't even take a moment to just 
sit down and like be present in in the space around us with the people around us and really think about you know what we're putting out there and the things that we're creating um and you know kind of putting into the world so um it's made and this whole conversation has been making me think and i was thinking about it a lot yesterday and just really how important this is to keep having conversations about our word yeah oh yeah i, I think it's really important and that's something that i'm really thinking about going into this new year as i think about the projects that we're trying to do with poetry and uh, even some of the plays that I want to get into uh, this coming year, which I can't reveal too much just yet. But, you know, definitely we're going to be talking a lot about words and just the power of them and just how much they can really affect everyone. And so even get into workshops, as we get into workshops and as we work with people, it's really cool to see them take a different approach and different perspective when we introduce them to this art form and they get to see how much things can be different for them. Um, I think, you know, with the world, there's a lot of just the, I don't know, it's, it's almost kind of like words having power almost kind of seems like a little superstitious a little bit. It's like, it's just a word, words can't hurt. But I think we're starting to see more and more how much things are different. And I think just as we really get practical and taking those steps to do things, I think we definitely will see a difference in how it affects ourselves. As you said, with the rice, that's gonna be us when it comes to the mental health issues and just as we go into work and, you know, just all of that coming out of this pandemic, like we really need that yeah. right now. Um, so I, I've made that a huge practice now with, the workshops that I do. So working with Southern Word, teaching uh, literacy through poetry, a lot of times we would come in and do workshops that were pretty heavy. And oftentimes we didn't always have like the best way to end it on a positive note. So I've been really uh, intentional about just like how to end this in a way that they can not only pull out those harder emotions, but show them how to pull out the joyful emotions, the exciting emotions, the ecstatic moments, and really use that like a muscle. You know, I, that's what I tell my kids. I'm like, hey, your emotions are like muscles. Don't worry about trying to bench press 300 right now. Right. Start with the dumbbells, you know? Let's, let's start with just a little and work our way up. And it's so cool when I'm actually able to see them progress from the depressing states that they were in when we started. And every time they're coming in, they're like, man, I'm so excited to be here. Like, this is one of the best classes I've had like all week. And, you know, I can't wait to come back next week. And then, you know, I've been writing new poems and doing new things. And when I got friends that want to come in, I want to bring them in. Uh, so it's, it's really cool to see that, see that difference. Yeah. So. And I think it's important to um, talk about like, you know, when we're talking about putting positive things in the world, it doesn't mean that everything that we write or do is just happy, cheery, you know, because yeah. there, there is a need to process those heavy emotions and art's a great way to do that. You know, whether it's a painting or a song or a, a book or a movie or mm -hmm. poetry or whatever, that that are the different mediums of art can help us process very dark things. And yeah. Um, I remember when I saw you perform at a Parlor V event, you did a piece on a father. Yes. It struck <laughs> me so hard, so deeply. It was in a good way. Like it was very healing for me. I needed to hear that piece that night and the way that it resonated in me. I've never forgotten it. It was very powerful. Oh, <laughs> uh, but, you know, it wasn't all unicorns and rainbows. You know, we like to talk about yeah. You know, that's, that's not, that would be sort of like a, um, you know, uh, an inauthentic positivity, you know, because life yeah. is hard. Life is beautiful, but there's also really dark moments in life. And I love that you're teaching young people how to work through those things because we can, yeah. we can work through them in a healthy, productive manner, but you know, not, we don't, we're not always just um, given this understanding of how to 
really connect with that and how to work through those things. And sometimes it is very much a learning experience and art is a great way to do that. I think to help oh, yeah. young people, but for any of us. Oh yeah. Cause I mean, and I'm, I'm thank you for bringing up that poem. Cause that poem honestly took me four years to write because I was still going through the process of forgiveness for my father in them in that situation so to really complete it it took me time just writing it over and over and over again until I got to that place and that's one thing I think about as an artist too is when I try to convince someone about a certain lifestyle or a way of living I feel it in myself this conviction that's like hey you need to make sure you're doing that modeling that example before you tell someone else to do it because we know youth they're going to do what they see us doing more than what we say and so i feel like you know if i want people to have better relationships with their fathers i want to show them that process and i think that's a big thing that a lot of us miss is we see people who are happily ever after but we never see that process of what they go through to get to that place. I think sometimes the happily ever after gets romanticized so much. Like you said, we we don't we fail to see the beauty in the broken moments and what can come of those moments as well. Um, and so, yeah, I think it's really cool when poems or movies or songs or even rap songs can just give you the real, the raw form of it, and it can just be laid bare. Yeah. yeah. And it can it can be very beautiful. And that's one thing why I really like, again, you know, hip hop just with the spoken word and rap, because, you know, even though there have been some songs that haven't been the best, there are some amazing songs and rap songs that are powerful about the struggles that people in broken communities have gone through, Blacks have gone through, Hispanics just all kinds of different communities where people are really struggling and yeah. to paint those pictures with their words and their emotions is really powerful. Um, and it's not just rap, it's, you know, different other genres that we see as well, but it's really good to see that. Well, it's truth. I think when, when truth comes out in art that, like you said, that realness, that raw, that's very, very powerful, then you know, just hiding behind something else or, or doing something that's not, and I don't want to overuse the word authentic because I know it's, it's yeah. used a lot, but for lack yeah. of a better term, you know, when you take truth and something real, especially something that's very personal and real in your life, and you, you're able to put it out there in an artistic form, you're, you're communicating something with other people, maybe in a way that you couldn't communicate um, in the conversation. And so I think that art is very beautiful in that way and very important and powerful in that way that yeah. uh, sometimes the things that are harder to say, we can say with art. And mm -hmm. so that goes back to how much weight our words have and, and how yeah. words in and of themselves are a very foundational part of, of art and art forms. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I just really feel like at this point, it can be hard for me to just create something out of nothing and just like, this is art. Like it can be that you can very well be that. But I know for me, I'm like, man, every time I create something, I always ask myself like, what's the message here? Like whatever that may be, it doesn't have to be, you know, in a particular direction, but what just, what is the message, message and the emotion that I want to give through this? Um, what's the way that I want to connect to people? And, you know, with the values that I have through my organization, you know, we think about love, empowerment, and a sound mind. Uh, you know, just having that transformation through those three things. And so I'm always thinking about that anytime we do some kind of poetry event, or even as an actor. I know it can be really difficult for an actor when you try to put limits on what you choose to you know, participate in, but I like to be really intentional about the messages and the stories that I go for. And I'm like, what is the message that we're trying to bring here? 
Mm-hmm. And I think that's important for any artist to be thinking about and just to see how powerful it is, not only for ourselves, because I think most of us do that. We all start off as artists for ourselves. It's something we enjoy, it's fun, it gives us a stress relief or just whatever form. But after a while, it gets to a point where it's like, man, I feel like this is a gift that I have that needs to be shared with others. And as we open it up to others, I think it's always important to figure out like how can we connect what my experience or my process to someone else. So Yeah. You're talking about acting, um, because you know, usually when you're acting, unless you wrote the script yourself, it's you we're performing someone else's words. Um yeah. we don't write it necessarily, but we still have to interpret those words. We have to yeah. interpret who that character is that we're playing and then we have there's choices we make in how we portray that and and put things out there so that's a an, another interesting aspect of the use of words because you didn't write those words but you're going to go out there and and interpret and portray them in a certain way and sometimes it may be a villainous character for some people that we need to show that side of of, of something but it's there's still um really constructive and productive things that can come through how you portray a story and how you interpret that story. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, stories, you know, they, they tell about our lives and as an actor, I really love it when I can really relate to the character or I can see this character through the experiences of friends or family members. And I'm like, okay, this is a powerful story and it's something that I know well and I know that there are people that need to hear this story. And so that is what really excites me. And I can definitely have been graced to be a part of some really cool projects. Like uh, at the Nashville Children's Theater, we got to do Ghost. Uh, it was a middle school book by Jason Reynolds about a bunch of track runners. And I, I really enjoyed that. Uh, I've done a lot of work with uh, Sean Whistle at the Destiny Theater Experience doing, uh, I believe he did, uh, Papa Was was one of his original plays and did this other play called Peel Hill. And it's just really cool to be able to get into those stories. I, I can definitely say I, I love acting. I can love, enjoy acting. And even with the spoken word, it's a performance thing for me. So, yeah, stories are, are really I need cool. to- I love I love acting. I love, I love teaching acting. I love to work with yeah. actors on those skills, yeah. developing that. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there, there's something really beautiful about um, characterization and and performing pieces of life. You know, taking taking something and then you know turning it into something that you can bring before an audience you know, that oh, yeah. you can all connect with because it is, it's life, it's, it's par- pieces of life that we've all experienced, but we get to encapsulate it into a performance. Yeah. So there's, yeah. Oh yeah. Beautiful. And I can say one thing I've been really happy with this year, uh, Children's Theater has given me a cool opportunity to actually help co-direct some plays. Uh, mm-hmm. So I got to do Annie last year uh, for an elementary school and the same same elementary school we're doing it's a combination of the Wiz and the wizard of oz okay and this time i actually got to create a script for it and i can definitely say man this is a really cool opportunity and to see these kids put it into effect and just see the message that's kind of forming i'm so excited and it's so just happy to see them taking this work and really putting their all into it. I mean, they are putting hard work into the dances, into the acting. They're really taking into consideration like what they're doing. And so it's just so cool to see uh, when every time I come in there, they're excited. They're like, man, all right, I'm ready. When is my turn to get up and like do my part? You know, and it's, it's so cool. So yes, teaching acting, I enjoy this. I haven't had a lot of opportunities doing it, but this year has really taught me a lot. And I know I'm, I'm going to be doing this more. 
Oh, that's awesome. And it's such a great outlet. Um, I, I don't know, are we are we missing opportunities? Do you think, do we need more of that in the communities for young people, um, like drama, oh, yeah. things like that? Um, I hope that it's not, I know it's not disappearing, but I hope that yeah. it's not losing some of those um, outlets for young people. Oh, yeah. I mean, I definitely feel like we need it. I mean, as much work as that's happening out here, I feel I still feel like it's not enough because we have parents and youth groups all the time that come to me or others that are like, man, we would really like these programs here or, you know, at our locations. And, you know, every now and then we try to help, you know, we try to look for grants, but it's like money is the issue. Funding is the issue. I think a lot of people don't think they think, you know, the math and sciences are what's important for us, but we forget that these things we use called iPhones were made from an artistic approach. And so we need art to do literally everything that we're doing. Um, and so I think it's really important for these students to get exposed to these different career paths, because I know artists now who want to become artists, people ask me all the time, like, how do you get into this? How are you able to do this? You're actually sustaining yourself as a full-time artist. Like, how are you doing this? And a lot of people don't see the opportunities. They don't see the funding. They know they want to help, but it's like, you kind of got to pay your bills in order to go help people over here. Um, so I think that's what's really important is funding, support, uh, you know, creating spaces for artists to come in and do work and just really backing that. I think really, really backing those things of what is going to change for the future so that we can have these more bigger career opportunities and so that we can have a different approach of how we think about the world, just in general. Yeah, absolutely. And what advice would you give to any of us um, who are artists, you know, and um, as we think about, you know, when we are writing something or when we're creating something that we know is going to go out into the world, things that maybe we can think about, um, you know, things that we can take into account as we're going through our creation, our creative processes um, to to try to help and to um, to build up, to build community, to plant those seeds um, and to really do something constructive with our art yeah one thing i could say is as an artist we're not one dimensional um, i feel like we're more like five right like you want to create for yourself not losing that you also want to create for your community but then you also want to create for the people who are around you that can really help create new opportunities and then the people who want to become artists, who want, who may come behind you, you know, because when I create, I don't just think about, man, I hope this crowd here enjoys this. I hope that I create something that is so good, but so important that I create space for other artists to come into this space and do work as well. When I get this grant, I want to do so well with it that they choose to expand that grant and want to fund more artists. So I'm always thinking about the community, the people who need to see that this stuff is actually affecting the community, the artists that want to come up and do this type of work as well. Because we all know like when there is a job opportunity for people to go into, they will do it. But if they people don't see any funding or any type of way to provide for themselves through art, they're not, they're not going to consider it. And so I know a lot of people that really want to consider it. They really want to do it. And just by my example, I've received so many just from my community. So I can't imagine the many other people that are out there that want to do this, but are afraid. Yeah. So, wow. yeah, yeah. so thank you for that. I know it's, I, I hope that um, we can expand art even more with getting more people interested in coming into like sitting in a theater and um and going to the art galleries and things you know that aren't digital you know I mean I'm I'm fine with the digital world but like yeah. and then 
be, you know, discussing those things among each other really, you know, because art is so community based. It's so yeah. rooted in um, our, our relationships with each other and, and yes. together. And I think that's a beautiful thing. So um, whether we have to do it on zoom or whether we are, are yeah. person, I think there, there's space for that, for building that community through through art and and through how we all connect with art and it's so different mm -hmm. so then we learn so much about each other through the different ways that art impacts us yes yes thank you yeah i, I could have said it better myself we we need that we do. Well, tell me a little bit about because i know when you've been on the show before we've talked a lot about southern word which yes. i love i'm a big fan of southern word and thank you again <laughs> appreciate all that you guys are doing um, tell me a little bit about Free Fire, though, because you have so many other things that you're involved <laughs> with. And I'm really interested to learn more about Free Fire. Yes, thank you. Uh, so Free Fire is an organization where we are really trying to transform people through our words, uh, through love, empowerment, and sound mind. And some of the things that we've been doing is really, basically, we specialize in spoken word performance, keynote speaking, and creative workshops for adults and so with those we have all kinds of workshops and activities for kids right but we adults love writing too we have emotions too we have plenty that we need to get off our chest sometimes and so i think about that and i like to bring that into spaces uh whether that's arts organizations corporations uh we really want to bring those type of things into the places where people can actually have a different way to feel stress relief most businesses, the only way they can think about is maybe giving massages to their employees or coloring books. That's literally what somebody told me, that we get coloring books or we can get a massage, but that's about it. We don't have any other way to really process how we feel. So this is something that I think would be really important in the workplace and for many adults in this space. But then also, um, we have many other events and things that we like to create too. So this past May, we actually got to create a tour that we did. It was called the Rebirth Tour in honor of the Harlem Renaissance. Since this decade is a hundred years since the Harlem Renaissance. And so our team got to travel doing a museum kind of tour. So we started at the Bradley Academy Museum in Murfreesboro, went to the Stax Museum in Memphis, 21C Museum in in Chicago, and then we finished at the Jazz Museum, the National Jazz Museum in Harlem, New York. Wow. And that was wow. amazing. It was so much fun. It was a combination of jazz and poetry with a live band. Everybody loved it. We had such a great turnout. It was it was amazing. So best believe your pictures from that. Yeah. Um your your wife had the most beautiful uh like it was like 1940s like I yeah to have it. yeah oh my goodness yeah. yeah she was stunning she's always oh, yeah. but... <laughs> yeah, of course her, her voice is amazing uh so it's really cool just to see her flourish in that way and just everybody enjoyed it it was so much fun <laughs> all right <laughs> um everybody enjoyed it it was it was so much fun and, and, oh gosh wow <laughs> we, <laughs> that's how much fun it was it's yes <laughs> we're bringing down the house literally literally, yes, literally. <laughs> um <laughs> so yeah we we've done a lot of cool events uh with people we uh jazz actually got to do a panel for a creative exchange with the arts and business council this year uh we've done some arts programming for people. Actually, we just did a three-part workshop at Hadley Park Library because they wanted to partner with us. And so those are some of the past projects that we've done. But we are currently, what's really cool is we're currently been nominated as Spoken Word Artist of the Year through the SEA Awards. So we are definitely excited about that. Uh, voting stops in March. So we definitely want to recommend people to go vote for us because we yeah. really appreciate an award and a, an accomplishment like that because uh, it's, it's been some great work and we want to continue to show people that this work is possible. Um, and the cool thing is this year we've expanded our team. So right now we have seven, six poets and 
singer on our team. And so we're really excited to bring more projects, more creativity to the community this coming year. And I know it's going to be a lot of fun. Oh man, that's, that's wonderful. Thank you for that. Um, when you do these workshops, do you ever have anyone that comes in there thinking that they, they're they not a good writer or they can't write oh, and, yeah. and, and then are surprised oh, to yeah. find that? <laughs> like almost everybody that comes in, it's either A, they are a writer and they love writing. They're like, man, I heard about this. I had to jet right over here. Or B, we have the person like, writing poetry? I don't do that. I don't mess with that in no kind of way but I'll just I'm just gonna sit in the back and just observe and probably within like five minutes they're already engaging by the time the workshops are over they probably have the most stuff written down and they're like whoa it's over wait we need more time we can't leave yet <laughs> this sounds really quick cool. so like hey don't worry we'll be back next week just come back next time and we'll we'll see you then and so we've had people legit come to every workshop and sign up for our email list. Hey, let me know when you have the next one. I love this. You've opened up some things in me that I didn't know were there before. And I like writing now. And that that is just such a, a reward to hear that. Um, and it's almost everybody that, that participates is in that space. So I'm, I'm, I love it. I love it. <laughs> So I we're definitely looking forward to more. So much that people, a lot of people will say, I'm not creative or I'm not good at this or I'm not, but they really are. You know, they we are. are creative. Human beings are creative. Yes. Are creative people. Maybe we just haven't found our niche yet or no one ever gave us the tools or we never had an opportunity to explore it further or we just yeah. convinced that we're not creative, that we yeah. just didn't even try so so many people think they're not creative and I'm like no there there is there is creativity within all of us in different ways oh, and yeah. aspects and so when you can bring that out when you can show someone hey you you do have a gift in this look you know it's exciting and it opens up a whole new world for them oh yeah and, and that's the cool thing about it is when we open up that world and really show them like hey you have things that are in you that you thought weren't there, maybe dreams, this creativity brings about new ways of thinking. And the thing that I really love that I really want to do through this personally is to see more adults dream and go for their dreams, open up those opportunities because that is going to influence the youth who want to dream but need to see people around them doing this stuff. We see people on TV, but in a way, those people almost don't exist. So in some ways, they say that it is easier to live out your dreams through the people on, on TV than it is to go out and actually do it yourself. Because you don't see many people around you doing those things sometimes. And when they try, they fail. And so I think it's so cool when we see people try, fail, try again, fail, and get to a point where one day you get that win and one win turns into five, five turns into a full-time opportunity. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, we are, we want that for people. So I, but regardless, even if it doesn't become a job or a career, just being creative, just allowing yourself to express and explore another side of you. I think it's just cool, just all together. Absolutely. And people really sometimes, you know, because we do, we think about dreams and pursuits when we're younger and, and there is a mindset of, well, I'm too old to start something new. I'm too yeah. old to do this. It doesn't yeah. matter if you're 80 years old, if you <laughs> have a dream or an interest in something, go for it, put it out. Yeah. Oh yeah. Cause I, and the other thing I mentioned that I do spoken word and acting, but I also do modeling. And one thing that they would tell me, I remember literally they would say like, you're too young. So we need you to wait a little bit till you get a little older. But then I think like literally the next year I had people like, yeah, you're kind of too old because you need to be younger to do this. And I'm just like, isn't this life? You know, it's, it's always either you're too young for something or you're too old for something. 
And I just realized like, you know what? I'm just going to go for it. Yeah. And doors open. People want new opportunities. People want to see you succeed. Um, and sometimes you just got to see yourself wanting to succeed. Yeah. I wanted it. And now I've had opportunities to be on billboards or Christmas catalogs. And I was just like, man, I never thought this would happen, but this is a blessing that is actually coming to fruition. And so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you're, you're never, mm-hmm. that's funny. Cause like, listen, when I'm 70 or 80 years old, I want to see a 70 or 80 year old woman on yes. the road. Okay. Yes. I don't just want to see a 20 year old <laughs> on the runway wearing those clothes. Show me the 70 year old with gray hair like, on the runway. That. <laughs> yes. That's, that's poetry to my ears right there. That's what I'm talking about. I want to see all the gray hair is just flowing beautifully. So, yes. <laughs> and it's important to know that because, you know, as we, as we age, as we grow into each stage of life, we yeah. become a, a slightly different version of ourselves because we have learned so much. We have gained so much. And so, you know, I'm not the same now as I was when I was 20. I'm yeah. in a different stage of life to where now maybe my my interests, my knowledge, my pursuits have grown with that. Maybe yeah. something new opens up. So maybe when yeah. somebody is 50, 60, 70 years old, they suddenly realize something that, you know, I'm I'm good at this or now I have time for this. It's, you know, so yeah, I love the idea that never <laughs> stop and just to keep going because you know, maybe you, you weren't interested in writing at 20 or 30, but maybe now at 65 and, you know, you're retired and the kids are out of the house or whatever, and you write your first novel. It's yeah. too late. So I can't. Oh, yeah. Enough, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm reminded about my, my mother who's in the similar boat. Like she's been a medical person all my life, like uh, nursing. And she as I graduated high school, she was becoming a nurse practitioner. So she's been practicing with mental health. And just in the past couple of years, she decided art was a thing. She came to uh, my birthday where we were doing kind of like a painting party. And she just discovered that she had a gift to paint. And, you know, something she's done when she was a kid, but she had shelved it for so long and hadn't thought anything about it. And then I go to her house. And she has all these different beautiful paintings up. She's actually been in contests where she actually placed second and all kinds of cool opportunities. So it's just like, man, had no idea this was in you. She didn't know this was in her. And it's just cool to see that. That inspires me because it lets me know that I know you you shouldn't stop dreaming, but to see her still dreaming in new ways and doing new things at her age and still willing to I think she's even thinking about going for her doctors. Wow. And it's just her doctor. It's just like, wow, you're still setting the bar higher. And I appreciate that so much, uh, knowing that I don't just have to be the bar and hold all that pressure myself as a person in my family, but my mother is still raising that bar. And so as the generations come after us, we don't have kids yet, but when we do, you know, we want to think about them and how they can see bigger, more opportunities, more more situations can happen. Yeah, and that those never stop. You know, I that's that's so great because I mean, I think there's a um, we can sometimes maybe get comfortable and just think that okay, well, the time for new things is kind of decreasing, and just get comfortable in life, you know, and just keep going. But to continue to set that bar, to continue yeah. to say. Man, what have I not done yet? What what can I do here? And just to keep going, because life is is short. Really, if you really look at our lifespan, we we only have but so many decades here. And so how much can we accomplish with the time that we have here? What what can we do? And um, so that that is great. You just inspired me with her. And then I was thinking about the the influence and the impact that you've had on your mother in, in art and the artistic spectrum and and how you're both. Um, inspiring each other yeah beautiful you know that's that's something that she reminds me of and I'm just like I can't imagine being that person who's helping you in that way and it's so cool to see that 
just coming out. And, you know, you don't, even though I'm doing this and I've been doing this for a while, it always just surprises me when people come to me and say, I've actually been able to influence their idea on art or their idea on poetry, uh, their idea on just wanting to shoot for their dreams, even if it has nothing to do with art, but the fact that I'm willing to go for what I believe in. Um, we don't realize how real that can be for people and how important that can be for people. And that's what motivates me to keep going every day. There are times where as an artist, you get that writer's block or you get those days where it's just like, I don't feel like being creative today. I just want to lay in the bed and just eat popcorn, watch Netflix and <laughs> just carry on. But, you know, I take my days. It, it does get busy and I, I am learning to balance out, you know, I have days where I can just rest, decompress from the day and just chill. But then I want to make sure that I'm still getting up every day with purpose and realize like, hey, have some time to rest, but now it's time to like continue that influence. People still need to see more. And one thing, like I said, I'm really big on this, the process. I think it's really important that, you know, we show the process of how people get from A to B with their success. Again, we see the end point, but people don't often see the struggle, the trials, the moments where you jump from here to the second level and then the third. So I love to show people that process when, um, hey, here's where I'm at right now, but here's where I'm trying to go. Hey, I succeeded from that point. Now I'm here and continuing that going. And they can see like, okay, this isn't some magical thing that happened for him where somebody dropped a million dollars out of nowhere and it just poof, he became famous. But it's a constant and steady uh, direction forward that we're doing. Yeah. And no doubt, the last thing is that I'm not doing it by myself. I have a great community. You know, my wife supported me, my mother supported me. Uh, we have a great board with Free Fire and just so many other artists that really want to help us move forward. So team is everything too. Yeah, it definitely is. And yeah, when, when we get in those moments where um, we're not feeling creative or we feel like giving up or, you know, to remember that in a world where there are so many words firing off as bullets, that we have um, a need to plant seeds, to put words out there that are going to help something grow. And so I think that if that's a motivator that we need um, to plant more um, positive and productive things uh, instead of tearing things down, Hopefully that can maybe keep us going a little bit because we our words are needed. People need to hear our words. And some days we think, oh, I don't, I don't know. I can't, you know, I can't create today, but um, yeah. it's needed. It's needed. And so definitely yeah. keep going. Even if you think it's not good enough, it's just keep going. Oh yeah. Yes. Well, thank you, you so much, Cameron, um, for coming back on the show. And I feel like every time we have a conversation, um, we get a little bit deeper each time and and i learned yeah. so much and i'm so edified um by the things that that we thank are you. able to bring out yeah thank you i really appreciate coming on here i was glad when you called me i was like man i got time this week i, I love having these conversations so count me in i thank you for having me this is always good to have these and i can't wait to share this with the community some of the folks that i know <laughs> So, well, where can people find you if they want to follow all of the things that you're in and get information on your workshops and your shows? Yes. So you can definitely follow us at uh, The Free Fire, fire spelled with a Y, F Y R E, on all social media platforms. So we do have our website at freefire.org. You can go to our website, check out some of the things we're doing right now, uh, get in contact with us if you want to collaborate or want to. Uh, see about some of our services, the Free Fire. All right. And yeah, that's that's it. And then of course my personal page, uh, IG Cam Speaks One. So if you just want to see what I'm doing in the spoken word acting world, Cam Speaks One on IG. You follow yeah, me everybody there. go follow. <laughs> yes, yes. Go follow. follow. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you again. And I really appreciate it. And um, I hope that we can have more conversations like this um, in the future. And until then, have a blessed uh, and productive week. Thank you. You have a great time too. All right. Thank you.